Let's just start. Uh, today's Torah portion is Vayelek. Vayelek. Uh, let's repeat after me. Vayelek. Uh, Vayelek means and he went out. When he went out. Let's see the, the verse of the Vayelek today. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 1. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. Uh, could you show us the, the Hebrew version together? Yeah. Uh, so, Vayelek Moshe Vayedaber et ha dbarim ha ele el kor Israel. So now he is he 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 went out. He went out, but it is it is loved from Yelek. Yelek means walk, walk. It's very important to understand the working together with our God. Working together with our God. Uh, last week, what we learned is Nitzabim. Nitzabim was the meaning of stand firm. So after stand firm, now we can walk. We can walk. First, we have to stand firm, then we can walk. Uh, this is the so important moment for Moses to end up his life before the Israelites came into the, Israel, uh, the land of promise. So this is the last moment for his will, like his will to, del to be delivered to the Israelites. So why uh, he went out and spoke these uh, words to all Israel? Because he wanted to, he wanted to, uh, speak to the Israelites the essence of the word in the spirit. Let's look together. Um, if we can understand, in order to understand uh, Yelek, uh, walking together, we have to see Enoch. Uh, let's see the verse of the Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Took him. Niaz, do you want to be taken by our Lord when you are alive? I think that's all our hope, right? <laughs> Before we die, if our God takes me, then that's the best case. <laughs> but we need to understand why he took him. Why he took him? There's a reason. Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Um, there's a janitor. There's janitor. But this janitor includes the essence of God. The essence of God. And there's an individual. Uh, it's going to be not an easy topic today uh, to understand very deeply. Uh, but it is so important to understand what is the principle that our God has his intention to deal with any matters in our life. Because if we do not understand this principle, we are not able to meet even the little thing of our God's existence in our life. Um, when he walked with God and he was not for God took him. So when we are living together with him, together with our Lord, means when we walk together with our Lord, then we can be taken by our Lord. The take, the take, the term of take 
is used for bright. For, for bright. So it means Enoch was prepared to be taken as a bride to the Lord. That's why he took him. This tropism is talking about the core of the Torah teaching in our life. Um, let's see the Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 2. 31, verse 2. And he said to him, he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. Um, I can no longer go out and come in means I do not, uh, I do not teche anymore and tabo anymore. Uh, do you remember what was the lesson of the Kiteche and Kitabo? The Kiteche proportion taught us uh, you need to go out first from the Egypt, right? And the rear your, uh, yourself should be coming to your life. That is going out and coming in. So after that, you can be stand firm. And now you can walk. So, the Moses is now talking about, I can no longer go out and come in. It means he did everything. What he received from the Lord in terms of the mission in his life. What was the mission, do you think? He, his mission was to make Israel as a bride. As a bride. The only mission that Moses had was to make Israel to be bride to the Lord. When was it started? It was started from Sinai Mountain. Sinai Mountain. Mountain Sinai. Mountain Sinai, that was the starting point that the Israelites started this journey to be made as a bride after they came out from the Egypt. Can you calculate the numeric value of this term? This is Sinai. This is 16. 10. And noon is 50, right? And Yod is 10. So if you calculate, um, if you uh, add all the values here, 130, right? The same word is here. Ayin. Ayin. Do you know what is the meaning of ayin? This is perspective. So when you came out of, out of the Egypt, your eyes should be changed first. Then you can see the right path, right way to follow our Lord. When Nias uh, came to Korea and met me, and he came to our church, and he was, uh, he was passing through all the, the events and the, um, lots of milestones in his life with our church, then his eyes has been changed. Do you remember what is the story of Apostle Paul? Apostle Paul uh, was on the way to the Damascus. And our Lord appeared to him as a light. And he made him blind. Right? And then he, he was brought to the Anania. And, uh, and after, uh, after some time later, um, after Anania received the voice of the Lord, and then... Um, when Ananiah met the poor, the, the, eye, the skin of the eyes of the poor was peeled off. What was the meaning of that? Our eyes should be born again. Means your perspective to see the world should be born again.
What would be the, the same one? Sulam. Sulam is a ladder. Ladder. Where the place where the Jacob laid down and dreamed. There was the Hamakom to see the ladder. The angels ascending and descending, and our Lord was standing there above. Um, why is it so important to have the, the completely different perspective in our life? Because our perspective is always based on our experience that you accumulated in your past. So you live based on what you experienced. So based on your past, your future and your present is being made. So uh, whatever you see, the something, then you just uh, judge the situation based on your past. But what if we can be born again? I'm going to talk about born again today. Born again. What is born again? Born again means your identity has been changed to the son of God, not son of the man, not son of your physical ancestors. When you are born again, your identity, uh, which was accepted in the spiritual world, was changed to the son of God. Means our Israelites started their journey and they encountered the moment to change their perspective because they have to be born again when they encountered the Lord through the Moses. And there was the place of the, the Jacob laid down to see the ladder. God was standing. And one more thing in this uh, proportion is talking about the same word. The Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He is the one who goes with you. So that's the the meaning of here. Hu ha holek amak. This is amak. Amak. This is also 130. 70, 40, sorry. Amak. Amak. Uh, 20, right? I thought I was wrong. <laughs> 70, 40, 20. So it is 130. Means, amak means with you. Actually, there's im here. Im is nation. Nation. So with you, with the whole Israelites. So what does it mean? Uh, your perspective should be changed to the perception of whole congregation. Because now the Moses is talking about only one single form of the word, not plural form. So he perceives the Israelites as a one, um, one objective. Only one group can be accepted as a oneness, not individuals. So, Sinai Mount, they encounter, and their perspective has been changed. And the, the place where the Jacob laid down was the, the place of the ladder was uh, placed. And now, Moses is talking about the Ha'olek Imak. Ha'olek Imak, what does it mean? Uh, he is the one who goes with you. So our Lord always goes together with you. He is the walker. Ha-holek. Ha-holek. 
means the walker. The walker. He is always walking with you. When you are prepared, when you are found as a bride, our Lord is always ready to walk with you. That's our Lord's intention. So our God is waiting for the moment when you can stand firm first. Then our Lord started working with you. Let's see chapter 31, verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 3. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispose them. Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. Um, I preached last year the same verses. So I, I think you might rem remember. Let's, uh, let's see it together. But it's so important to uh, compare the verse uh, in terms of two terms. So uh, when you see the Hebrew version, the Yahweh Eloheka who obeyed. Yahweh Eloheka who obeyed. But as the same structure of the, the sentence is here too. So if you see uh, the last sentence of the, the verse, Yehoshua, Yeho, Yehoshua, who obeyed. Right? So, what did you find? Yahweh Eloheka. And Yehoshua. Yehoshua is a complete name of Yeshua. Like uh, Tim and Timothy, and Tom and Thomas, things like that. So when you visit Israel, if you say, oh, Yehoshua, then they, they think Yeshua. And if you, if you speak Yeshua, they accept Yeshua. So it is the same name in Israel to be accepted. What does it mean? Yahweh Eloheka means our Lord. And Yeshua, the same one. Same one. Now, the Moses is talking about the relationship between father and son. And uh, God is always considered as a general. The general is including all the essence of the spiritual world. So the spiritual world um, doesn't seem any visible things. Like uh, we are talking about the love, we are talking about um, gentle, we are talking about the perseverance, we are talking about the gratitude, we can't make it as a visible one, things like that, in the physical world. It is a very, very um, invisible one. But Joshua is appeared as an individual one. Why our Lord has come to us as a man, as a human being. It is very, very important to understand because if our Lord just exists in your life as a Lord, not visible one, then you can't accept him. You don't know how he is. Even you don't know what his intention is you. Um, Many religions, in many religions, they made their own God because they do not see what is the God. 
and they even do not know what is the, the intention of God who made this world. But our Lord is very strange. Uh, in many Torah uh, scriptures, there's lots of stories that our God has jealous mind, right? He's jealous always. When we turn back to um, other gods, he's jealous and he wants to punish him, right? He's a general. He's a general. By why he is jealous to us? Even just a single, just a tiny of the world. Very, very small particle in the universe. If you go out, go out to the universe, if you see the, the, the earth, can you find your, yourself? It's impossible. It's like dust in the universe. But why our Lord is jealous when we have different minds? That's the question. That's the question. Because the Lord wants to marry to you. The Lord wants to take you as a bride to get married. It's nonsense, really. We lost our perspective when, when we uh, started living our life in the physical world because of there's a lots of um, the ethic rules, there's a lots of um, the regulations that you have to keep in your mind, there's a lots of things that you didn't choose by yourself when you were born. Like uh, uh, Raymond and Ben, you were born in Africa and you met your parents, but it was not by yourself. It was decided. And Niaz was born in Pakistan, but you didn't decide yet. Um, so, what our logic in our brain is, uh, we have to be something. We have to be something before my neighbor, before my people around my life, even I have to be something before my wife. That's a human thinking. That's a human thinking. So, uh, if I am a very res respect respective, uh, sorry, respectful person in the society, like uh, um, I am CEO, and I'm kind of a, a very high position level of the, the employee, or I'm kind of a businessman who is so successful, then he could be kind of the same position in the house. And then how your children and your wife can accept you as a husband and father. It's different, right? Do you understand what I mean? So, your existence should be found in different way to other existence. So you have your general. You have your general. Like uh, you learned you know, lots of Torah already. And you learned what is the spiritual word. So, like this. Uh, Raymond uh, learned about the sharing. So he shared and he delivered the message to his people. So he brought the people into the uh, church congregation. Let us think about it. If we, uh, we get rid of all the uh, the environment that I'm, I am headed to accomplish in my life, including rewards from the heaven and the salvation in my life, what would be the left behind? That should be always the question in my mind. I found Niaz, and Niaz 
has never been changed in her heart. Even if, you know what, um, nowadays I have been uh, so busy. I became so busy man nowadays. So uh, I usually work overtime and I came back to uh, home very late. And then even uh, compared to the past, I do not visit his house or I cannot have the regular uh, LTG with Niaz. But what is the left behind? in Nia's mind. He still loves me. Even more. Even more. I feel that. Do you know what is that? That is existence. That is existence. When we, uh, when we are grown up, we must face one time. We can be, uh, we can be, Arrogant things, right? When we are grown up, there's a, something that I can do by myself. Oh, this is what I couldn't do it by myself, but now, oh, I can do this. Like uh, uh, Raymond came to Korea at the first time, he didn't even know uh, how to get the, the train or bus, right? But now you know it. And he could understand a little Korean as well. And now he became very stable visa, right? There's lots of things I can gain by myself. And then what we are thinking of is, oh, these things I have uh, accomplished. I have accomplished. I'm preaching the Torah. I can summarize the you know, the lessons that we passed through together for the last three to four years, and I can preach well now, but this is not mine. This is not mine. This is all what our God prepared for my life. The only thing that I have to do right now is to be found as a bride. As a bride, I don't need to be a good preacher. <laughs> I don't need to be kind of a, you know, superior ability person in the company. In order to meet our load, there's only one requirement for me, for you, to be found bride, the pure mind, the pure mind. The month of Tishuri, where we, are, we entered right now, is the time to make you the real bride. Real bride. When we experience this general, you might think, this is mine. This is mine. If I can make lots of miracles, if I can make lots of wonders in your life, then you might think of me, I can be kind of a person who has the general from the Lord. And even I can think of myself, oh, I, I, I'm kind of a person who has the ability of the God. Things like that. No, that's not true. This general, the purpose of this general is to make us realize what is existence of God. So our Lord prepared Torah to understand what is the general, what is the general mind of the Lord. So the general is all about the love, all about the love. But it was described in lots of ways to understand what is the love it is in our life. But if we just understand, if we only just understand the general, then we don't know what is the individual, what is the 
the real existence of self. Right? What do you think? The marriage, the marriage is the combination between your existence and your wife's existence. So, uh, when Raymond got married to Olam, uh, there has been lots of conflictions because you have never encountered her existence before. But after you encounter her existence, there's a lots of conflictions that you need to be combined together. Why? Because this is not general. This is not general. Do you understand what, what it means? That's why our Lord has to be man. The Lord has to be man. Many people in that, er in that era who only had the principle of the general couldn't accept Jesus Christ because their principle of the general was to see the Messiah who has a powerful ability and lots of uh, the superior power to, to scatter out the Rome at that time. They wanted to be, uh, they wanted to be, uh, get out of that realm of the, the Rome at that time. But the Jesus Christ was not found as a kind of that leader. What he spoke to us, what he just prepared for delivering the messages to the Israelites, there was only the one. I am the one who delivered the word of God. Right? Even he didn't, he didn't show off himself. Although he has the ability because he was God. But he didn't even show any ability instead of our Lord, our God, heaven. What he, what he showed us was just existence. Just existence. But exactly what I'm talking about is the existence of God is Christ. Christ. So, when you when you accept the general the general of the Lord, the God, and then you can be born again like the Israelites. Because oh, that is the love. That is the sharing. And that is the real uh, the teaching from the heaven that you need to accomplish in your life if you accepted it and you can accept the life from the Lord then your eyes can be changed okay but still not yet you need to be found as a the real existence of the self this is called vessel this is called the vessel so combination means combination between God and you between bridegroom and bride means you you receive the light in your vessel then it is made as a unification this is the meaning of combination between Two existence. Existence of God, existence of you. And then you really accomplish your individual. Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 16. Chapter 
chapter 16, uh, chapter 31, verse 16. Verse 16. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers, and these people will rise and pray the harlot with the gods of the foreigners of the land, where they go to be among them, and they will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. So, what he wants to make is the covenant. The covenant is only the, the thing could be made between groom and bride. But what the Lord is uh, prophesying is that we play the harlot with the gods of the foreigners. That's a prophesied. That's prophesied. Uh, let me explain. Um, once you experience miraculous events in your life, like um, uh, you, you have never expected something great help from the Lord, great help from the, the people around you, but if you experienced it, then you can be say, wow, it's really, really blessing from the Lord. I praise the Lord. And if this kind of blessings continue to be poured out to your life, then your life can be changed, really. Really, in any ways. But after some time later, uh, like, um, you know, uh, like uh, the relationship between the father and son. If the father looks like uh, uh, he's not taking care of the son anymore, or there's uh, something, rules, atmosphere, which is made between the relationship, then you might think, oh, it's not real father. It's not real God. Oh, there's uh, the blessing is stopped now? Then you can blame something. You can be frustrated. Frustration can be made in the period of the, the stop of the blessings. But this blessing, of course, you might think this is uh, the blessing for your physical life. But anyway, people expect the blessings on your physical life, like money, like uh, getting a good job, like uh, you know, the business is going well, lots of things which are really related to your physical life, then people normally think it's a blessing from the Lord. But if it's stopped a long time, you never experienced it, you can be torn away, really. That's very, very easy for the people who can turn away. Um, but our God, remember, allowed you that period. That period. Do you remember what is the, the, the story of a prodigal son? The prodigal son took his, uh, his money from the father and he went to the far uh, country and he spent all the money with the woman, and even he became um, uh, the beggar, and he took just um, the fruit which only pigs are eating, and he realized that, oh, I need to beg. I need to go back to the father. So, do you think a father didn't know it? Do you think a father didn't expect the second son, who is a prodigal son, will be spending all the money with the woman and uh, will be poor in the situation and go back to the father. He even expected it, but he let him go. He let him go. Our Lord knows you, everything. Even there's some negativity you can face in your life about your neighbor, about your father, about your wife, everything. But he allowed you 
that period. Because after you pass through that period, you really can find your existence. Who I am? Who I am? That should be the question in your life first. Don't act like the religious man. It doesn't need. It doesn't need. We only need the pure heart to be found as a bride before the Lord. That's all. That's all. I don't, uh, I don't want anything about Niaz. Niaz will be a great teacher, <laughs> or rich man, or any other things that he can possess. I don't expect anything from Niaz. I just want to love with him. And I only want to him to be found as a son. Son and father is a bridegroom and bride. It's the same relationship. Like a God and Jesus. The same. The only thing I want to do is to love with my son. That's the only the thing I want. And that's only the thing what our God wants us to do. The same one. I told Raymond lots of times, oh, you need to be very successful business, businessman. <laughs> and you can establish the, the farm to bring your uh, neighbor in, around you, things like that. But that was just uh, the help for your, uh, for your around people to gather your source, to be found the father. But personally, I don't want to expect anything from the Raymond. It is so, so important principle. In this Torah, uh, there's um, the verse of a song. Let's see Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 19. Verse 19. Now, therefore, write down this song for yourselves and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouth, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. So why he is now talking about the song? Because singing is unforgettable. Unforgettable. Um, in my... Uh, in my student period, uh, there's many advices for studying English through the song. If you sing a song in the English lyric with the song, you can very, very remember um, you know, easily the sentences, how you can construct the sentences, things like that. And you do not you know, forget about the you know, melody or something uh, if you learn about that through the song. So the song is very, very important. But it is uh, the principle for the spiritual world too. Um, do you know what is the Song of Songs? Song of Songs is uh, uh, the, the book uh, which is which can be compared to the most holy place. This is the song between uh, groom and bride. When you enter the most holy, there's the, uh, the mercy seat. Do you remember what is the mercy seat? The mercy seat uh, this is the mercy seat. This is a holy place, and this is a curtain, and this is a mercy seat. And there's a, uh, the wings of a cherubim to cover the mercy seat. Do you remember what is that? Right? And this mercy seat is compared to the bedroom between God and us, between groom and bride. Um, there's only the voice 
in the, the most holy place through the mercy seat. So it's called edut. It's called edut. This is ed. Ed is Ed is witness. Ed is witness. And Ed is Eden. Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Why our Lord made Eden? Because he wants to get married to you. So before they are Deceived by the snake, they were completely oneness with God. With God, so they have never, they have never avoided any voices from the Lord before they were deceived by the snake. But after they are deceived, they hide themselves when they listen to the voice of the Lord, right? When you enter the most holy place and when you encounter the mercy seat, there's only the voice of the Lord who call you. Who call you. And that is Eden again. When you are found as an existence of the self, then you can be accepted as a, the real existence as a bride, then you can enter the time of marriage. You understand? Um, let's conclude this sermon today. Um, it is very, very important uh, not to be kind of a person who can act like uh, I know everything based on my experience. No. Your experience should be changed as a, the experience of Christ. When you are accepted, when you are born again, your past is changed as a Christ. Then you never think about your past that you uh, witnessed by yourself. Your witness should be in Eden, should be in most holy place to be found as a bride. And then you can listen to the voice of the Lord. Do you know only the high priest can enter the, the most holy place? Right? Uh, the Jesus. Our Jesus was our high priest. And if we are combined as a, the body of Christ, it means if you are found as an existence of the self, the vessel, the real vessel to contain the existence of God, the Christ, then you can be accepted as a bride. All right? Let's pray. Let's pray in this time. Um, remember, our God only needs love. He is just love. His purpose to this world is only love. But we lost our love to our Lord because we only seek my desires to, to accomplish my purpose instead of our God's love, God's purpose to us. What if we look back us? Let's look back us to question ourselves. Are you really prepared for being found as a bride or harlot to seek other gods? If you still seek other gods as a harlot, let's repent and let's return back to our Lord. Since it is still Teshuvah period, until the Day of Atonement, 
we have a chance. Let's repeat again. Let's record again today's lesson. Let's repent before the Lord. Let's pray. Let's get it. Get up. I get it. Get it. Let's get it. Get it. Get up. I get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Let's get it. Get it. Get it. Get up. I get it. Get it. Get it. Lord, we only seek our desires. So we lost your love. Your love to me. was perfect and is perfect will be perfect but I only think of myself based on my past my experience today I want to change my past to the past of Jesus because I was born in your arms and I want to proceed with my journey Haholek the walk And then I can be taken by yourself like an oak. Lord, thank you for uh, teaching us today. It is so, so important to understand what's love from you. We lost our perspective so much today. I want to be recovered. I want to return back to your arms again. Lord, please accept me and please let me prepare for the time of Tishri to encounter you again. On the day of atonement, on the day of Scott, we will see you, we will embrace you, and we will be accepted by you as a bride. We expect that day and we want to be bride before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.